I have just switched to Android after 16 years of using an iPhone, and I have to say, it's really not been that easy. But as a lifelong iPhone user, I've been getting a little bored of the incremental updates like year over year, and so I've been trying for three years now to find a way to move over to Android. And we all know all the benefits that Android brings, better customization, faster charging, reverse wireless charging, better cameras, and just a ton of features that we just don't get on the iPhone, or rather we might get them in about five years time once Apple comes up with some clever Apple name for them. But Android does still lack a few functions which makes actually switching away from iPhone and the whole like Apple ecosystem to Android very difficult indeed. Now the first one is iMessage. Now this depends where in the world you are located, but iMessage is still a big deal for many people and there are so, so many reasons why it's one of the most loved messaging platforms out there. Android has its own messaging standard you might have heard before called RCS, which stands for Rich Communication Services. And Android has been pushing Apple now for years to expand RCS to iPhones to allow this semi iMessage like experience across platform, but Apple being Apple, no. Now the best workaround I've found for this so far has been an app which kind of works and lets me send iMessages. It's not as seamless, but it does fill the hole that's left. And for those of you too embarrassed to be a, a green bubble, well, this lets you keep your blue bubble. Now the second problem, and one I'd argue is probably the biggest problem with Android, and the one that you'll really, really miss is, you might have noticed it, is the Apple Watch. Even today, there are still no decent Android alternatives to the Apple Watch. Now I've tried a few, the Pixel Watch, the Galaxy Watch 4, the Galaxy Watch 5, the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro. None of them come close to the Apple Watch or the Apple Watch Ultra. Now I would say the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro comes the closest, given that the battery life rivals the Apple Watch Ultra, but at half the price. But the interface just isn't as responsive. It lags, it stutters, and more recently when I've been doing workouts in the morning and trying to end a workout, unless you swipe exactly horizontally on this screen, it doesn't register anything. And that's even worse when the watch is wet from swimming. Apple just seems to have nailed the whole watch OS experience with their watch being as fluid and just easy to use as their phones. Now I will keep trying different watches and hopefully the Galaxy Watch 6 Pro will provide a good option. But for now, I'm actually gonna be keeping the Apple Watch Ultra on every day. And as long as I keep an iPhone at home, then it still does like everything I need it to do. Now I know that's not something that everyone can do. I guess it's either a perk or a curse of this job, either way. For most people, I would say just go with the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro for now, as that is just the best that you'll get. But the watch aside, there is also one issue that keeps cropping up on all types of Android phones that has taken me a while to, I guess, get over, but it's still something I noticed immediately after switching, and that is the shutter lag when taking phones. Now the problem is a simple one. Take the phone out of your pocket, open up the camera, tap the button, and wait, and then it takes the photo. Now with an iPhone, it is instant. Now the resulting photos Android captures are impressive. Like, I've actually really come to prefer the Pixel for taking photos. I think they are more like Instagram worthy than iPhone's own over-processed and unrealistic images. But I have missed a few action shots of fast moving objects, being my children, <laughs> where that split second or two of lag between you know, pressing the button and it actually taking the photo has caused me to miss the thing that I was trying to snap a photo of. And until only very recently, that lag issue was also applicable to pretty much every Android phone that I've tested over the years. Prior to Samsung's S23 lineup, I've got the S23 and the Ultra here, every single phone would suffer from slowdowns, glitches, bugs, and fundamentally just giving me an experience that I didn't enjoy because things just wouldn't work as they're advertised. Now for years on the iPhone, one of the biggest reasons I see people switch, and I see them in the comments all the time, from Android to iPhone, is because of how smooth and like fluid the whole experience is. Now I'm still gonna be including performance as an issue in this video though, as to date, only the Samsung S23 lineup includes the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chips, which is the one that makes them significantly faster and way more efficient than all their predecessors. Now I just hope that we see more phones come out with them this year, and I really hope that the Fold 5 is one of them and the Pixel 8 can really really up their game with their tensor chip this year. Now number five for reasons why switching to Android can be a nightmare is their alternative to Apple Pay. Now fundamentally speaking Android is not as popular as Apple and so right now not everyone supports payments via Android devices whereas they do on an Apple device. On the Android phone my card that was on the app on like the pay to park app has expired and it doesn't accept Google Pay or any kind of form of Samsung Pay whereas you fire it up on the iPhone and Apple Pay is accepted so we're gonna have to use Apple to pay why now on Android we have a bit of a confusing situation I have a Samsung phone but Samsung Pay doesn't support the cards I want to use so instead I have to use Google Pay on a Samsung phone and even then that doesn't work so I have to use a third-party app that does support my card to then use my unsupported card via a third-party wallet app on my first-party phone madness now even simple tasks like paying for parking 
haven't supported Google Pay or Samsung Pay. And even those that do support Google or Samsung Pay, well, the reliability in whether they'll actually work resulted in me accidentally buying two bacon rolls at the gym this morning rather than one, which normally I'd be quite happy about, well, if I didn't have to pay for them both. And the frustrations don't stop there. Now, if you have a partner or a family member still using an iPhone, then there are some additional complications which do take some time to work through. Now, Google Photos replaces Apple Photos, super simple. WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger replaces iMessage, again, super simple. Google Calendar replaces Apple Calendar, which means you have to kind of get people to switch their calendars over. And when my wife asked me to, uh, you know, oh, can you just send over those photos you took earlier today? She seems really annoyed when I can't airdrop them. So you do need to put a bit of work in with others living in the same house if you still want to live a peaceful life. Switch out the calendar apps, get set up on other messaging systems, install Google Photos on their phones, and start moving away from some of those Apple wall garden apps that you have. Because the biggest issue I found with moving is with the next two things I want to talk about, the apps and the ecosystem. Now, firstly, in terms of apps, there are so many apps that I've come across which are Apple only. Like Fantastical, my favorite calendar app on the iPhone and Mac and iPad and everything Apple, I still can't find a replacement for them on Android. Now I am currently using the Google Calendar, which works pretty well, but it's still frustrating when you realize that an app that you've used for years hasn't developed an Android version. Now my fitness app, Strong, which I've clocked up an impressive number of workouts on my iPhone and Apple Watch, well, it doesn't sync workouts with the Android app. So I've had to go through and manually recreate all of my workouts on the Android version and then start my streak of workouts from scratch yet again. So just be prepared to put in a little bit of time to make sure that the apps that you, you want or perhaps need are actually available on Android and spend some time finding alternatives if there are some which aren't. But the biggest issue of all issues, the one that actually previously filled me with dread when mentioning its name is the ecosystem. It is by far the biggest issue which stops most people from switching away from Apple to Android. It's in all of my comment sections on all of my videos. You mentioned it to Marquez, to Aaron from uh, Mr. Who's the Boss. They all say the ecosystem. And the fact is there is not a single company in the entire world who has nailed an ecosystem like Apple has. Now I feel like I've been trapped in this perfect Apple ecosystem for so long now that I saw it as a negative. But since switching to Android, I actually have a new appreciation for how well it actually works. Like when I open my MacBook Air, my watch automatically logged me in. When I watch TV and I need to type in a password, my phone pops up and I can write it on my phone instead of using a fiddly on-screen keyboard or even paste passwords on my phone. When my friends come over and want to join my Wi-Fi, my phone knows and automatically prompts me to share the password with them without me even telling them what it is. And once I join Wi-Fi from one of my devices, it's instantly shared with all of my other devices, my iPhone, my watch, my laptop, my iPads, my Mac, like, everything so I don't need to sign in again. Of course, you've got the ability to airdrop files and, and also copy and paste literally anything from anything to anything. Now, when I listen to music, I can hold my phone up near the HomePod mini and it will automatically transfer my music or even the call I'm on to the speaker. And there is just a near endless list of how well Apple's ecosystem works. And after three years of trying to move to Android and more recently a few months of actually having switched to Android, I can finally actually appreciate Apple's ecosystem for what it is, which is something that is pretty amazing. Now, don't get me wrong, like Android is a great operating system and particularly the S23 Ultra, I've been completely blown away by uh, and still intend to stick with it. Like honestly, I know so many people that have switched away from iPhone to this phone because of how good it is. But what does all that mean for the whole Apple versus Android debate? Well, actually I'm still very, very keen to explore both sides of this very spiky and passionate picket fence. On one hand, I'm actually really keen to buy more Apple devices to see how far I can push the Apple ecosystem. Maybe I'll fill the house with Apple TVs and Apple HomeKit compatible devices to see if I can design this super smart Apple Home built on top of Apple's Home app. But then I'm also really keen to switch out all my Amazon Echo devices for Google Home devices instead because the Google's voice assistant is far better than the iPhones. And of course, as a tech reviewer whose literal job is to continue testing devices of you know, all types, I don't think it really matters what phone you choose to use as long as you enjoy using it. Until next time.